Big tall hat, big jacket, and you can't boil a f***ing egg. You're a f***ing joke. Those are what we refer to as fighting words. For some reason, Chef Gordon Ramsay thought it was a great idea to put himself through hell. Hotel hell, that is. See what we did there? Anyways, Ramsay has stayed in hotels all across America to help them fix their businesses. And in doing so, he's been in some, let's say, compromising situations. Oh my God. Lena, did you in the pool? There's no way I'm going in there. Like Kitchen Nightmares, he's there to help the business, but he also ends up doing so much more. Hello, my name's Nino. He helps families torn apart by money issues, sibling rivalries, and lack of business knowledge. That being said, he's had to endure a lot of crap in order to get them to that point. So let's take a look at Gordon Ramsay's very worst hotel hell experiences. I would myself asking you to run my dog up the hill, let alone a hotel. Oh my God! Gordon Ramsay and the Applegate River Lodge. We've been doing this for 20 years. We've been playing music. I think Gordon's gonna like it. Are you checking in? I'm so sorry. The Applegate River Lodge is located on a beautiful piece of land and run by a few aging flower children. So we smoke pot. Poof, that's what I could smell the minute I came in here. Yeah. What do you want me to do? Is this legal here? Yes. It's supposed to be a family-run business, but husband Richard, better known as Pa Butt, and then we'll probably jam out later okay. in the butt hut. What, what is the butt hut? Just help me. Understand. Would you like to see the butt hut? Gets high all day and leaves his ex-wife Joanna to deal with all the drama while their sons bicker. No, he's never even looked at the checkbook. Richard keeps saying that he isn't a businessman, but it's a little too late for that. The lodge is beautiful, but it's got no furniture and no guests. When they do have customers, they hold so many loud parties, the guests leave and get a refund on the way out. I don't think I'll be able to relax here. I can't really escape the sound. Wow. Richard was so high, he couldn't even show Gordon to his room properly and couldn't even explain why the business was failing. What's worse is the kids make money off the hotel and don't give any of the profits to the actual hotel, knowing their parents are in $900,000 of debt. I have no problem telling him to get the f out of here. I'd give you a kick with the ass if that was my son. As if all that wasn't enough, using the black light, Gordon saw a multitude of bodily fluids on the ceiling, lampshades, and on his pillow. Before we go any further, how about hitting that subscribe button and notification bell so you always find out when we upload a new video. It'll help keep us checked in. Let's get back into it. Oh my God! Ramsey and the Juniper Hill Inn. Oh dear. Gordon has left. He thinks I'm stealing my staff's tips. Unbelievable. The Juniper Hill Inn is a historic building owned by a man and his partner, who apparently think it's preposterous to pay their staff. Excuse me. Excuse me. I am the boss. You can't call yourself the boss if you don't fucking pay them. The locals have stated that they don't feel classy enough to be accepted by the owners, so they would never stay there themselves. That's saying a lot. The lobby of the hotel looks like someone went antiquing and is building their own museum. There's even a sign that says, please don't touch the artwork. So who would feel comfortable in there? It's a beautiful place on a beautiful piece of land, and three presidents have dined there. Teddy Roosevelt actually was best friends with the man, or a very good friend with the man who actually built the house, Maxwell Evar. But they have no money, which is why Gordon Gordon is here, but something tells us that if they sold those antiques, they might be able to pay some of their bills. Are you always this pathetic? I am not pathetic. Unfortunately, the worst is yet to come. Gordon's room smells like sewage, pointing towards an obvious plumbing situation that everyone's avoiding. Raise your hands if you'd come back, please. Not like it is. Not like it is. In addition, the head chef left because she had to buy all the food on her credit card and was never paid back. I, I can't. Disrespectful, disgusting man. The owner comes off as pompous and out of touch. He's living above his means, he knows it, and frankly, he doesn't seem to care. Oh my God! Chef Ramsay in the Monticello Hotel. Oh my God, look at this. I wish this I was insane. kidding you. It's like a hoarder, it's just junk everywhere. This is a particularly sad one, as most of this hotel's problems can be traced back to owner Philip Lovingfoss's drinking problem. He makes a mockery of himself and the hotel when he shows up drunk and acts a fool. He said he wanted to own the hotel since he was eight years old, and he obtained it by marrying the owner when he was in his 20s and she was in her 60s. My mother worked here when I was very young, and I remember all the cocktail waitresses and how beautiful they were. And... She passed away, and just like that, everything went to him. Now he's rich and has a girlfriend who's 30 years older than him and living the high life off of the deceased wife's money. Sounds crazy, right? But the hotel is sorely neglected, literally falling apart. There are only four suites available for rent because the countless other rooms are being used as storage for Philip and his girlfriend's stuff. 
Gordon was pretty appalled at the state of the storage rooms, how much crap there was in there. Just a big fucking waste. Gordon was forced to stay in the North Wing, which is just a motel beside the hotel that Philip bought. To make matters worse, the motel is furnished with old stuff that Philip and his girlfriend no longer want in their home. This hotel could definitely be on an episode of Hoarders. And just before filming started, Philip got arrested for a DUI, which he didn't really seem to mind. You are f***ing kidding me. Let's be honest, we don't even need to go into the dining experience. Just trust us. Like the hotel, it was horrible. Oh my god! Ramsey checks into the Curtis Hotel. The Happy Mother's Day sign looks a bit crap, but I suppose it's the thought that counts. The episode featuring the Curtis Hotel did not get off to a good start. The Curtis House is the oldest inn in Connecticut, and it's been run by one family for 59 years. But recently, customer complaints have been piling up. The Curtis House is haunted. See. Those complaints from customers included ants on their food plates, stains on their pillows, and water damage in their rooms. The water damage was so bad in one room, it looked like the ceiling was going to cave in. For some reason, the staff put Gordon in room 16, commonly called the haunted room. But it should be called something else. The dirtiest room, perhaps? It has dead bugs all over the place, a dirty footprint on the pillow, and before Ramsey could even sleep on the bed, the canopy fell down. I don't think I'm gonna get possessed staying here. I think I'm gonna get a disease. And of course, like all of these hotels, the food is horrible and nothing is cooked to order. This guy must really hate mothers, the way he's treating these dishes. You put food on a plate like you're slopping it. Can I borrow that cloth a minute? The head chef, who's also the co-owner, was wiping down plates with a cloth that was covered with grease and food. It was essentially the same cloth he used to clean drips on plates before they went out. This hotel is one that should be strong because almost everyone who works there is part of the family. One would assume that they could work together really well after four generations. Promise me. You're going to continue talking to your sister. The minute you don't, the place is doomed. But is that too much to ask? Oh my god! Ramsey at the Four Seasons Inn. Slightly warm. And Layla hasn't taken a in it. Great news. Four Seasons is a popular chain of hotels, so it's something of a surprise to see one struggling. But owner Sandy seems to be confused as to how to run an inn. He's $1.5 million in debt, and no staff members are being paid. Air it out. Go ahead. Nobody believes it, Sandy. Where's your marketing? There's nothing to market. However, they do get to live in the inn for free. The inn was supposed to be animal friendly because of a dog kennel across the yard, but no one brings their pets except the owner, and everyone complains about dog hair being everywhere. In their food, on their linens, and everywhere else you can find it. In Gordon's room, the bed isn't spread, there's an empty six pack in the garbage bin, and the wallpaper is hideous. And a disgusting, smelly pillow. The viewers eventually find out that the hotel isn't even affiliated with the real Four Seasons. So far, my stay at Vermont's fake Four Seasons has been a huge disappointment. We have to wonder, legally, is that even allowed? That's a question for another day, though. Sandy is also head chef, but has no culinary experience. He's as good a chef as he is an innkeeper. Fucking useless. Gordon called the food bizarre and weird, and from the looks of it, he's not wrong. All the food just looks gray, and the risotto in particular looks like dried, lifeless rice. An apple concentrate in a risotto. Yes, sir. Come on. Everyone that works there just looks defeated, especially one of the chefs who went to school for culinary arts and can actually cook. Oh my god! Ramsey at the Calame Inn. One of you step up. If you were my daughters, I'd kick you out. I thought Gordon was going to be nice to me. The Calame Inn is run by two sisters who are described by their staff as spoiled. Their father put up the money to buy the hotel, and they don't realize how serious it is that they turn a profit. One sister cries all the time. <laughs> I want... <laughs> I want a soda. And the other is delusional about how hard she actually works. I've been here for three and a half years. I've done everything from bartending to front desk to serving. In order to save some money, the father likes to walk around and take the bulbs out of lamps so no one can turn them on. Gordon's room has a moldy mini fridge and no wardrobe. In addition, the room looks unbelievably cluttered. There are pea stains on the walls, not sure why that's a thing, and holes in the wallpaper. The biggest problem, however, is that the sister owners are completely delusional. I worked when I was 14 at a fast food place. Are you serious? You want me to get impressed with that? They think they've done no wrong, and they're running the hotel the best way possible. Throughout the entire episode, the sisters kept saying that they wouldn't personally spend their money to eat or sleep at the hotel. Can I tell you something, Gordon? 
Jen has called herself the best cook in town. She has Stop told us- Stop picking on her. her. The staff can't stand the pair and fittingly have no respect for them. In fact, the staff are so bitter and angry towards the owners that they're all on the verge of quitting on Moss. It feels like I'm in a woman's prison. The best thing about the hotel is Mandy, the sometimes general manager. But the sisters managed to make her so mad that she quit. One of the funniest things about the hotel is that they boast about having a gym, but it's actually a rec center down the street. Seeing Gordon try to walk down the street in a robe, kind of hilarious. There's just too much trash talking around here, and I can't work with people like that. Oh my god! Jeff Ramsey checks into the Cambridge Hotel. It's not a ghost, John. They're scaring the regulars away. It's you. Televisions with no remote controls and beds that are spread with people's hair all over it. That isn't even the worst part. The owner is ex-military, and he runs his hotel like the staff are troops. Oh, did we mention that the place is supposedly haunted by a little girl named Alice, too? The owners seem to be playing up that haunted thing, because their entire establishment has photos of people from, like, the early 1900s, and nobody knows who they are. Who in the hell put this here? This really is hotel hell. The decor is dreadful, and not only are they still using wallpaper, but it's the worst wallpaper you could ever have. Oh my god, bloody hell. Everything that comes out of the kitchen is sous vide, meaning boiled in a bag. So technically, no one in the kitchen is actually cooking. The owners have borrowed money from every single one of their kids, including 10 grand from their daughter in college. They're about to lose their house and the hotel, rendering them homeless. What can I do to help you? Nothing, get out. Out, out. All right. This hotel supposedly invented the pie a la mode, but they've even managed to butcher that. They microwave their apple pie, and not only does it look like crap, it tastes like it too. That menu stinks of laziness. I'm not lazy. I'm here 80, 90 hours a week. Yeah, you can't call yourself an executive chef. Come on. But what takes the cake is that the owners don't even lock the door at night. This led to Gordon telling the owners and the guests about the rates of criminal activity in town, a figure that in itself was more than a little shocking. Sell the place because you're not fit to run it. Sell it, because this is madness. Oh my God! Gordon hits the Brick Hotel. Oh. What is it, like pet corner? We drop our cats off for dinner here? The staff calls owner Verinder a dictator. She screams out demands, they say. This hotel used to have a great reputation, but it's taken a severe hit in the last few years. Before Gordon even went into the hotel, he decided to meet with ex-staff to see why they quit or got fired. And they just ripped into the owner. You said she called the cops on you. Oh, all the time, numerous times. Yes. Seriously, called yes, the yes. police because you wanted your money? Yes. yes. The hotel is literally falling apart, with broken windows left untreated for years. As for the filth, dust was everywhere and it turned Black. Let me get housekeeping for you. Housekeeping? Cool. Fire brigade. And mold had taken hold all over the place. It's just absolutely disgusting. The food was even worse. Highlights included something I've never heard of before. Cauliflower steak, whatever that is. I should have known better. That is a mess. Who put it on the menu? Brenda. And crab cake sandwich from a can. Gordon gave up pretty quickly, ordering salted water and saying it tasted better than anything on the menu. More importantly, over the last three hours, all I've done is a bacteria test. No. Oh my god! Ramsey at the Mason de Messia. This New Mexico hotel is pretty dreadful. Owner Callie is in complete denial that her hotel is a crap show. In addition, she's one of the main reasons why the guests leave early, because she seems to think she's share. While her guests eat, she tries to serenade them. I'm not too sure what's more scary, the food or the singing. But basically just screams in their ears while they're dining. The decor isn't as bad as some of the other hotels in this video, but it's certainly questionable. The entire establishment is a weird beige color, and the tables in the dining area are covered in vinyl slips. One of the most awkward awkward things about this joint is that there's a cleaning waiver. It states weird things like, if you throw red wine on the walls, you will be fined. No, sir. I'm not gonna sign that. And to top it all off, the theme of this New Mexico hotel is Tuscany, because that's what tourists in the Southwest are looking for, right? Oh my God! Ramsey in the Roosevelt Hotel. I saw a billboard of a guy with the most hideous hat on, <laughs> covered in trees and like this six foot hat. <laughs> <laughs> the Roosevelt Hotel was meant to be an ode to Sherlock Holmes. However, the real mystery was what the hell they were thinking the way they ran the place. You want to punch me? Uh, you go well, first. Maybe I do want to punch you a little bit. But... Owner John didn't consult his wife when he decided to buy the hotel, leading to a pervading sense of marital strife and awkwardness in the establishment. John! 
You can't just walk away. One of the first things that Ramsey said when he walked into the hotel was that it smelled. He soon found out that that was because there were dogs everywhere. It smells like shit as well. What is that? Is that did the dog do a... Oh boy, I sure hope not. Let's see, what else? The entire hotel was a nasty shade of pink. The hotel was filled with dust as if no one had ever cleaned it. And once a month, they held a murder mystery party night that made them zero dollars. Whenever Gordon confronted the owner about this horrible hotel, he would run away, literally. Oh. I'm done with that interview. Oh. Shut up. Over. No. To Gordon's surprise, John was also the chef, but he couldn't even boil an egg. No, really. Gordon requested a boiled egg and it came out raw. And once we moved on to the bedrooms, the blacklight test revealed that their linens were some of the filthiest the program had ever seen. A lot of changes needed to be made, and there was only so much Gordon could do. Screw it. I really don't care if he leaves. Why don't you stay with us for a while? Hit that subscribe button and notification bell. And while you're here, why not check out some of our other videos?